हॅलो फ्रेंड्स आय एम डॉक्टर अनिकेत पावणोजी अँड यू आर वॉचिंग बेसिक केमिस्ट्री वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ बॉन्डिंग इन कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड इन द लास्ट व्हिडिओ वी हॅव स्टडीड अप्लिकेशन ऑफ मॉलिक्युलर ऑर्बिटल थिअरी टू ऑक्टाहायड्रोल कॉम्प्लेक्सेस कन्सिस्टिंग ओनली सिग्मा बॉन्डिंग इन दिस व्हिडिओ वी विल स्टडी अप्लिकेशन ऑफ मॉलिक्युलर ऑर्बिटल थिअरी टू द कॉम्प्लेक्सेस इन्वॉल्विंग पाय बॉन्डिंग लेट स्टार्ट द व्हिडिओ When we apply molecular orbital theory to octahedral complexes consisting only sigma bonding this is the molecular orbital diagram in this diagram we have seen that eg a1g and t1u orbitals of metal as well as ligand they overlap with each other to form bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals among these the t2g orbitals of the metal do not have symmetrical orbitals to overlap with them and therefore these t2g orbitals remain non bonding therefore these t2g orbitals are available for pi bonding these t2g orbitals are actually dxy dyz and dxz for the formation of a pi bond with these t2g orbitals we need specific orbitals from the ligand which can overlap with these t2g orbitals Let's see what are the types of ligand orbitals that can participate in pi bonding. These are the metal orbitals. The first type that can overlap with these metal orbitals are simple filled p pi orbitals as in fluoride, chloride and bromide. We know that in case of fluoride, chloride or bromide there are 2p orbitals, 3p orbitals or 4p orbitals. These orbitals are occupied with the electrons. So these filled p pi orbitals of the ligand are available to form a pi bond with the metal orbitals. The second type of ligand orbitals are simple empty d pi orbitals as in case of phosphine and arsine. We know that in case of phosphorus for example it has outermost electronic configuration 3s2 3p3. The phosphorus also has the d orbital which is empty. These empty d pi orbitals of the ligand are available for pi bonding with the central metal atom. The third type of ligand orbitals that can overlap are empty pi molecular orbitals of polyatomic ligands like cyanide and carbon monoxide. We know that when the carbon monoxide molecule is formed by the combination of atomic orbitals of carbon and oxygen, the molecular orbitals which are formed out of those only bonding molecular orbital consist of electrons. The antibonding molecular orbitals are empty. These empty pi antibonding molecular orbitals can accept the electrons from the central metal atom and can participate in pi bonding. Now when we consider the ligand orbitals, in case of ligand orbital, the pz orbitals are already involved in sigma bonding. Now there are px and py orbitals which are available for pi bonding. In case of octahedral complexes, there are total 6 ligands. each ligand is having px and py orbital available for pi bonding in this way there are total 12 pi orbitals available with the six ligands if we consider triply degenerate orbitals that means the three orbitals are having the same energy then there will be four triply degenerate sets these sets are t1g t2g t1u and t2u now among these 12 orbitals of the ligand the t1u orbital is already involved in the sigma bonding Therefore these t1u orbitals are not available for pi bonding. When we look at the metal orbitals there are no t1g or t2u orbitals. Therefore these t1g and t2u orbitals of the ligand they remain non bonding. Now among these four sets only t2g orbitals are available for the pi bonding. Now in this way among the four triply degenerate sets namely t1g t2g t1u and t2u only t2g orbitals are the orbitals which are available for pi bonding now how do these orbitals overlap with the central metal atom suppose these are the metal orbitals these t2g orbitals will overlap with the central metal orbitals in this way but what is the effect of this pi bonding the main effect of the pi bonding is the metal complexes get extra stability due to the formation of a pi bond in addition to the sigma bond along with that it also affects the splitting parameter delta o let's see the effect of pi bonding on splitting parameter delta o now when we consider the sigma bonding this is the molecular orbital diagram as we can see at the center of the mot diagram 
The gap between the T2G orbitals and EG star that is EG antibonding molecule orbitals is called as delta O which is equal to 10 dq. Now when there is no pi bonding, in case of sigma bonding the T2G orbitals are non-bonding. Now for the formation of molecular orbital diagram in case of pi bonding, we will consider only this T2G and EG star orbitals. So now we can say that these T2G orbitals of the central metal atom are available for the pi bonding. Now there are two cases. Either these ligands are more electronegative or less electronegative. When the ligands are more electronegative, it is called as filled or donor ligand. When there are filled or donor ligand orbitals, these are more electronegative and hence low in energy. In the other case, if there are empty or acceptor ligand orbitals, the ligands are less electronegative or we can say that metal orbitals are more electronegative and therefore ligand orbitals are higher in energy. Among T2G and EG star orbitals, only T2G orbitals participate in pi bonding. Therefore, the energy of the EG antibonding molecular orbitals remain as it is. The T2G orbitals of the metal and T2G orbitals of the ligand, they overlap with each other to form T2G bonding and T2G star antibonding molecular orbitals. Similarly, in case of empty acceptor ligand orbitals also, the bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals are formed. Now, according to the molecular orbital theory, the atomic orbitals which are more electronegative, their electrons goes to the bonding molecular orbital and the atomic orbitals which are more electropositive, the electrons of those electropositive elements, they go into the antibonding molecular orbitals. Hence, in the case of filled or donor ligand orbitals, as ligand orbitals are more electronegative, electrons of the ligand goes to the T2G orbital that is bonding molecular orbital and metal orbital electrons as they are more electropositive they go into the antibonding molecular orbital. Now we can see that the gap between the T2G and EG orbital is decreased but in the case of empty or acceptor ligand orbitals the metal orbitals are more electronegative and ligand orbitals are more electropositive. Therefore, metal orbitals goes to the bonding molecular orbital and we can see that the gap between the T2G and EG star orbital is increased. This is only because in case of filled or donor ligand orbitals, the ligand orbitals are more electronegative as they are the donor ligand orbitals. But in case of empty or acceptor ligand orbitals, the ligand orbitals are more electropositive as they are acceptor ligand orbitals. Hence, in case of filled ligand orbitals, the delta O decreases this type of interaction is called as ligand to metal pi interaction that is the ligand orbitals are donating the electrons to the central metal atom. In case of empty acceptor ligand orbitals as the delta O increases this interaction is called as metal to ligand pi interaction. In this case the metal orbitals are donating electrons to the empty acceptor ligand orbitals. In this case the metal orbitals are donating electrons to the empty ligand orbitals. This is the effect of pi bonding on splitting parameter. In case of filled or donor ligand orbitals, delta O decreases and in case of empty or acceptor ligand orbitals, delta O increases. I hope you followed the application of molecular orbital theory to sigma bonding as well as for pi bonding. If you like my video, click on like, do share and subscribe my channel. If you want to ask something, mention it in the comment box. Don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos and keep watching basic chemistry. Thank you.